Welcome to Fright Night. Hi, I'm Chucky, and I'm your friend to the end. Please welcome our the Clown! We can defeat death. We can achieve every doctor's dream. You'll be famous. I decided to be an actor when I was seven. I was in every play in junior high, every play in high school. I did uh, three national tours, one through over the cuckoo's nest. I'd studied with one of the most famous acting teachers in America, Uta Hagen, for two years. And I got cast in the movie that um, when I die, the only thing they're going to remember me for is Cannibal Holocaust. And I got cast in that movie because I wore the right size shoes. But do you know what finally convinced them? The chance to become famous to reach that spot where time stopped three or four thousand years ago, where the Yanomamos, the tree people, live oh, in constant strife with their, their enemies, the Shamataris. See this guy? This was a, a Yanomamo warrior killed by the Yakumos. Just to give you an idea, the, to the Yakumos, this is a savage. I had enough presence of mind to know what I would regret when I was doing it. They, where I didn't shoot the pig, where Roger wanted me to shoot a pig, and I knew that that would be on film forever, and I knew I didn't want to have to defend that after that, and I refused to do it. So aside from that, um, there's nothing I regret about it because it was a great story, you know? Just the adventure, first of all, the adventure of doing it, and, and secondly, well, I'll be honest, uh, I didn't think anybody would ever see it. The animals, when they killed the animals, that, that was hard and it disturbed a lot of people on the set, including me. I wasn't there for the turtle. I'm glad I wasn't. I'm sorry I saw it. Yeah, there were a lot of like native people native to the, to the, to the Amazon region area that we were working in. They have an entirely different culture than we do. I don't know if they had uh, the same kind of problem that I would have had, that I had with killing animals on film. And a matter of fact, within the cast, uh, when I wouldn't shoot the pig, um, Ruggiero had Lu Luca do it. Luca grew up on a farm. He didn't have a problem. Um, and I think Perry, uh, I don't know. I actually don't know. I lost touch with Perry and he doesn't do interviews and he won't. He won't, and I don't know why. It was my good fortune to be the last one killed. I didn't have to be there. The days that they ate Jack, I had I had the day off because I wasn't I, I, I wasn't there for any of that. I was there a little bit later after they did after they did Jack. I was on the set the next day, and they had built a body. They had him buried up to his neck. So then, and then they built a fake body out here like this so that his body could be cooking while his head was going uh, like that. Make it look like he was being cooked alive. You know, making a movie is so bifurcated, I want to say. It's so different. It's done in, in, in slots and in pieces. Even in a movie like Cannibal Holocaust, which for the most part was shot in uh, chronological order. So if you notice, there's a there's a um, scene where we rape a little native girl and we get all muddy. And then every shot after that, we had to be all muddy. There's another aspect of this, which is when you're an actor and there's 35 crew members standing around and they're waiting for you to get it right. And, and the whole world is watching you. And then you do the take. I'm thinking of the 
the, 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 the love making scene. Oh, that was painful. So we did the first take and then Ruggiero said, uh, you know, let's do another one. We did five takes of that. And you can kind of feel, you try to block it out as an actor because you have to focus on what you're doing, but you can't help but notice all those 35 people like kicking the dirt going, when are we going to have, you know, if you just get it right, it'll be lunchtime. We can get lunch because that's what they're thinking. So there's this pressure that people project at you to get it right. Probably after they killed the monkey is when I thought, did I step in it? You know, did I fly myself into like the end of the story here? So I kept my plane ticket and all of my cash because they, they paid us in cash um, with me at all times. Because I had this fantasy that the day they were going to kill me on the set, you know, I mean, it's just so stupid, you know, because we drive 40 minutes up the river, then we drive another half an hour up a little tributary and that was the set. So somehow I'm gonna run from there back to Letitia and get on a plane and there's only two planes a week. I mean, really, you know, but I kept all my money and my plane ticket with me so I could escape. I never had my own copy of the script. I read it once, I made a mistake. I read it my first night there while I was eating dinner. Shouldn't have did that. I would wake up in the morning, I'd go to the set, I'd find out what we were shooting that day, I'd borrow somebody else's script so I could get my lines. I actually didn't want to go to the set that day because I didn't want to rape that girl. You know, there's always the conflict between what your character is doing and then how you want people to see you as a person. And that's why actors are crazy because we have to do things that normal people would hide. Right after we got finished with all that disgustingness, um, it was lunch, you know, lunch. And then um, we come back and she was a real pro. She was a real pro because she was able to sit on that pole and not move. She was only 14, I think. It was shocking in the sense of, I didn't expect it. I didn't quite know it was coming. It was done so well that to see it live was like uh, magic. It was like magic. It was like, wow. So I, so when they were, when they killed the monkey and they wanted to kill the pig, and I said, what happened to the magic of the movies? And they said, so I'm like, shut the fuck up, you know? And then when they did that, I was like, oh, we don't need the magic of the movies. This is the magic of the actors. You know, this is going to make us famous. Yeah, you think so, huh? How yeah. famous? Real famous and real rich. Yeah. What are you gonna do with your money? I'm gonna buy a house and a piece of ass. <laughs> Think that's funny, huh? Yeah, that's the only way you can get it. Where's Pay? I don't know. Turn the camera off, will you? Grace, what's taking you so long? Well, I had to wait in line with the rest of the animals. <laughs> You're disgusting. Hey, get out of here. I told you to get out of here with hey, the camera. I just want a little pee. Will you get out of here? Hey, get out of here with that thing. Get out of here. Come on, I told you to turn the goddamn thing off. I'll get you. Woo! It's hard to get more shocking than the killing of the turtle. Um, or the pregnant woman, or the <laughs> all those multiple other weird things that they did. But since it was a human, you know, Ruggiero really did pull off a good trick. Here's the trick he pulled off. He killed animals in the movie, and then um, made people think that, and then faked the killing of the people. Right? So it was like that switch through. For many years, I, I, I wouldn't answer that question. I would say, I don't want to talk about that. And then uh, I finally did an interview where I just said, eh, what the hell? No, they didn't tell me that. I mean, think about it. I'm an actor. My whole business is to be out in public. So would I agree if, if they paid me, but they weren't, they didn't pay me. Um, did the others sign that? I don't know. I don't know. But I was in America and 
You know, they were releasing this in Europe. I heard that it had been seized by the censors. I heard that there was a judge who wanted to make sure that we were still alive. But they sure as hell didn't fly me to Rome so that, you know, I could appear in public. Um, so for a long time, I said, people love that part of the story. I don't want to burst their bubble. It's like, so So let, let me amend my, my answer. Yes, I, I did sign that and I did stay out of, of uh, of the public eye for a year, yes. You know, we don't seem to have much trouble showing humans doing the most awful things to each other. In fact, almost every movie has some gruesome thing, some heinous thing that somebody does to another human. Okay, so where's the line? You know, uh, we're gonna not show animal cruelty? Why not? <laughs> Why not? So when they banned this movie, they did two things. One is they made sure that people like you had to see the movie because they couldn't kill the word of mouth. And there were two places in the world where you could still get this movie. And one of them was in the Netherlands, in, in Amsterdam. And that was the first copy I saw 20 years later. Once it's out there somewhere, somebody's gonna tell their friends about it. They didn't anticipate the internet. And with the internet, there's no such thing as banning things anymore. As it happens, my grandfather was the head of publicity at 20th Century Fox in the probably the 30s through the 50s. And he worked for the Hayes office, which was the office that uh, censored movies in America. <laughs> you know, and once once the foreign market started showing more nudity and that market started coming to America, money was to be made. And they kind of backed off on all that stuff. This changed, this changed everything. Cause you, I mean, don't we, I don't think it's only actors. I think it's just a natural human thing that you're gonna be in the public eye and you start thinking about you. How do I look? Are they gonna like me, you know? Now I've met people at, at conventions and yes, I do do conventions. So at first I was like, shit, I don't want to meet these people. This is a weird movie. And then Bob said to me that when he was a kid going to conventions, it meant a lot to him, the people who were kind. And what does it take to be kind? What it takes is to not judge a person as they're coming to you and to not put them in some kind of a... So I have had people come to the table and say things like, Oh, it's great to meet you because I love your movie. Boy, we had something like we have a lot in common. And then my thought is, I don't think it's great to meet you, you know, because we don't have anything in common because I don't like this movie. But in, in order to be kind, you know, I have to say, hey, you like this movie and I'm in it and it means a lot to you to meet me. It's like, you know, maybe that's five minutes of my life that makes somebody else go home feeling really good. So, uh, I actually, I, I really have a good time at those conventions. I have a great, great time. The hardest part is the single moms who bring their little 15 year old boys and they come up to the table and they go, and there, there he is, he's standing there like this, you know, and he's all shiny and you know, terrified and, and his mom is like, he he won't, he's in the basement watching your movie all day, every day. Will you talk to him? And I'm like, yeah, I hope you don't expect too much because I can't cure him because I don't know what's wrong with him. And I'm not sure there is anything wrong with him, but I can see where this particular movie is a great wedge for young men, mostly men to separate from their parents and to say, I'm on my own path here. And the more it scares the parents, the better.